Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to our CSK News episode. A lot to talk about today. The first we're going to talk about is the roster shuffle, then some rumors, and of course we're going to break down the major guys, what happened throughout playoffs, throughout the entire tournament, and why it was not as bad as people might think it was. So of course we'll hop into our first story out there, and again we're going to touch on the actual roster moves so far, and then touch on rumors, and then break down the major. But of course, first of all, uh, we actually will have Cloud9 adding Flush to the roster. It's been confirmed as of, as of this morning. Sticko posted to his Instagram story, guys, and he is off the roster now. This was actually not expected. It was apparently Sticko who was signed to this Cloud9 roster for a longer period of time than Golden. It has now reversed itself. And I, when I first actually read the post, I actually thought that Golden was going to be the more permanent member because he was their new IGL. I thought he had more permanency there, and it just turned out to be true. I was actually wrong, but it turned out to be true. I got lucky. So what it is. So Flush apparently will stand in for Cloud9 at Blast Pro Series Istanbul. It's going to come up here very shortly. Alongside that, though, we also have ESL New York. We're going to see Scream on Fnatic. So going to be some really cool roster shovels, of course, coming soon. We're going to see how these teams do with their newest members. My first thought is this. I do want to say uh, I, have, I definitely think that Flusha was obviously one of their more dominant players for Fnatic. I do want to say in my own opinion I don't think this solves Fnatic issues. I do think those, th this actually might improve Cloud9's roster though with Flusha in place of Sticko. So we're going to see how this actually works out. The great thing about all these questions we have in our head is to, if these rosters are going to work out we're going to find out this weekend if they actually improve themselves. And again you really can't take too much for, too much for granted here these first few weekends because of course it's the first time these teams are playing with these people in their rosters, but still a lot of our questions will be answered this weekend guys Scream goes to Fnatic and of course Flusha goes to Cloud9 two trades I never would have thought to be possible But also speaking of the former French scene We actually have Envious apparently coming back to CSGO and bigger announcements out there I'm gonna link all of Decay's articles down below for all of you apparently Envious is returning to CSGO But don't get your hopes up quite yet And that's because it's with the X-Splice roster or at least part of that roster It's gonna be led by JDN They're gonna have Drone and Cutler as well as Semphis from the x Splice roster. Now, I don't know as of right now, it does not seem Davey's going to be there, although Davey played with these guys as a part of the X Splice roster. And why this core came back, it smells so much of the Dignitas coming back. So, I really, you guys can leave comments down below what you think of this roster. As of right now, with those four players, it seems to even be a subpar North American team when you consider what the X Splice guys did. You know, the bottom half of ESL Pro League as well uh, in that relegation, they, they luckily got their spot back as a core with Davey back in that team. I don't know what to expect from them. I really could be wrong here and they could come out with a big boom in ESL Pro League, but I really I, I really do believe Envious is coming back. They wanted a North American team because Envious now located in North America, I believe, down in Dallas or somewhere in Texas. It does make a lot of sense for them, but it smells a lot like Dignitas. If you guys remember uh, this past summer, Dignitas also returned to CSGO with a brand new roster because those guys also had an ESL Pro League spot. They shortly thereafter lost that Pro League spot, and then almost immediately after, they disbanded that team. So it seems like a lot of this Envious return is based on the fact that those three guys, that being Drone, Cutler, and Sempis actually have a pro league spot and if they lose that spot I am very worried that this team will last although I did miss JDM I really well, I'm very excited to see how he comes back to the opping role itself but that team their fifth member could be a huge change again there's going to be so many players available as more rumors have come out by Decay guys apparently team Rogue is going to be making some serious changes which could free up a lot of those Rogue guys if they want to leave that if Hiko received offers from JDM's team uh, you know former teammates themselves it's certainly possible as of right now though, according to Decay and rumors it's actually Kadian being targeted by North to be their IGL and I think definitely one of the more underrated North American IGLs as of late he definitely brought Rogue to where they were that success of actually making the major and then again actually doing you know fairly well despite not making it out of that first stage they did very well in some very close matchups against North and Astralis both going to overtime I think definitely underrated IGL apparently it will be Kadian going from Rogue to North to replace MSL which brings in the huge question as to where MSL would go especially given the results before the major for North they were definitely improving as a team MSL looked very good. He actually showed some fragging power, and that would call to question. If they are willing to bring in Kadian, it, it seems like a really weird change to make unless MSL had other offers and they sold him somewhere else. We're going to see if he goes to replace a Kerrigan. I don't know. FaZe is going to be making changes, but a lot of things in question right now, guys, and Team Rogue is also in question for making possible changes. A team that I was really hoping would stick together, um, like a complexity, you know, after doing very well at the Major, they're going to stick together. I would love to see Rogue stick it out, but this just shows me they had no, they had no real faith in the future of the roster, which again, can't really blame them. And also very lastly as well, we do have speculation. Of course, ESO Pro League does start here within the next couple weeks, if not the next, I think, 14 days. Um, I haven't really checked the dates on that. I think the next two weeks, ESO Pro League will start. I'm very excited to announce as well. I'm really excited to see the final Ghost Gaming roster. Of course, it's been confirmed that Crystal is now off that team. He was not IGLing as well. He's been bounced around. Feel bad for where he's at, but they will be announcing a new fifth before Pro League. Uh, after talking to Sabrosa very shortly, that, that's obviously not a huge announcement uh, to be broken there. They need 
need a fifth anyway, although there's a lot of speculation on the line. If you guys know Ghost Gaming and the history as of right now for their Ghost Gaming Academy, as well as um, part of their past roster was actually a member known as Neptune. Neptune is the guy who allegedly either lied about his age to play with a, 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 type, a, a higher tier team uh, when there was age regulations at many tournaments, or he just forgot his age. So allegedly, again, there's a lot of confusion around Neptune. I actually tried to ask these players how old he was. I'm still not sure how old the guy is. According to his Wikipedia, his birthday was actually September 15th, and he was born in 2002. Which, but the, the Wikipedia also says he's only 15 years old. But if he was actually born on September 15th, that date's obviously passed in 2002. That would mean he's actually 16 years old, and that would mean as well he actually meets EPL regulations for ESL Pro League. And also, if you like, look at his bio, he's always been a Ghost Gaming member, or at least an active member of their academy and a part of their their main roster. So that bio does not mean too much. But sorry, I'm trying trying to get the actual point here. Ghost Gaming's fifth member could be 16 year old Neptune if he's actually 16 years old. Either way, though, within two weeks, guys, we'll have Ghost Gaming full roster, which I am very excited to see how this team does. One of the teams who I think is definitely an oddball, especially given their past few months though, a team who is definitely improving, and I am so excited to see what Steel and the boys can do. Hey, what's up boys, guys? You 1% girls out there, intermission here really quickly. I forgot to announce in today's episode that G2 also announced their newest coach. If you guys saw Ocelot's tweets last week, there were two French flags and we thought replacing two members. We were hoping maybe Body and Smith, or at least I was, uh, at least one of those two. It does seem one of them will actually be coached. The former MBS coach Malik has now joined that roster. As you guys might know, on this channel, I never diss any coach moves. I think a coach is always an improvement. Although, in my own opinion, this might delay any further gains for the team. You know, kind of have to correlate between back and forth. Although he has that experience with all those guys. G2, one of their newest members, is going to be Malik, their coach. Will they replace now one player to, to fit that tweet? That's what we don't know. And on to the major talk out there, of course, all about playoffs and the biggest surprises so far we saw throughout the major. I know a lot of comments out there, so if you guys are done with CSGO News, you know, this is probably going to be a longer segment out there. We're going to break down some surprises, some upsets, as well as, of course, the playoff run. I know a lot of comments out there said that uh, the major was anticlimactic. It was kind of boring throughout playoffs. I can't disagree with you. The runs that both these two teams in the finals had, Navi, of course, first taking down in dominant fashion big, and then MIBR, those were both 2-0 sweeps and pretty dominant themselves. Astralis, even most, or, most uh, more so, although the the um, the uh, series against FaZe Clan a bit closer because of that one map, they still 2-0 FaZe Clan, they 2-0 Liquid, and then in the finals, they dominate Na'Vi. I thought it was going to be an amazing finals event, which it, I, I think it still was. It just it didn't have enough time to actually build up the hype. When you go 16-6 on Nuke and 16-9 on Overpass, it was just, I, it felt like it was done with before it could even start, and that was probably the worst part about it. The playoff runs, though, um, not too exciting, unfortunately enough, but still, I don't want to take away from the fact that Astralis was by far away by the end of the day the most dominant team here the teams they took down the teams they dominated they are they are by far and away in my book and probably your guys is well deserving of this major title it just sucks because it was not close that that kind of takes away from their major title nonetheless though guys they are grand champions and they are so dominant alongside that though i do want to thank all of you guys who believed in me we got our gold trophy, although it was not that rare. This time around, I believe it was actually 27% of people got the gold trophy, which is the highest percentage we have seen in at least four majors, and that is because the playoff run was actually all favorites. If you guys saw all those matchups, every single one, a favorite did win. I'm not going to break down all those matchups, but it was actually relatively easy. Even me messing up my two picks because I picked big to actually um, I, to beat those two matchups and actually make the finals, I still got a gold trophy. Barely, but I still got it. So that was pretty cool to see. See guys and in fact if I would have chosen Navi like I should have I didn't I'm just saying I would have got 100 points which would have been cool. So before we get into surprises, upsets, I want you guys to comment down below. What was your best moment in the major? What was the what was the biggest surprise? What was the biggest upset? What was the coolest thing you saw at the major? And I'll make sure to try and reply or at least read all of your comments, guys. Also, want to announce the sticker sale is active right now, but it also might go away today. I, again, a Valve usually makes these things last two to three days. This year, it did start on Saturday during the semifinals, so it could be done by today or likely by tomorrow. Today is usually the update day, though, for here in America, Tuesday nights, or for European people, it's usually Wednesdays. So the sticker sale will end very shortly guys likely with the next CSGO update but on top of that I do want to discuss some biggest some big upsets in my own book that I've memorized I've, I've tried to memorize and compile in my head the first of which I think I have to announce is actually Mouse Sports going 0-3 alongside Windstrike unfortunately enough they're going to be back through the minor system we've already talked about the teams they're going to have to play back in the European side of things that was definitely a big surprise although Mouse Sports historically speaking is one of the few teams out there who actually go winless in a, a, a few majors definitely a sets a record for many top teams out there especially going into this one being a top team in the world they go 0-3 alongside a team who 
probably was the worst team we've seen in a major in a long time. That's definitely a big upset. I also put though in a big upset that didn't, that didn't happen was actually Windstrike taking Cloud9 to overtime on Inferno. It's not a huge upset because it didn't happen, uh, you know, actually, you know, they didn't actually win the game, but still taking them to overtime was definitely a surprise. Alongside that though, I think the biggest surprise of that first stage was actually North. North, of course, coming off a big premier win. They actually fall to Vega Squadron in a best of three, actually 2-0 sweep in pretty dominant fashion. Vega Squadron take down Going into this major, probably your, your highly expected team, that's going to be North, and they failed to make the champion stage. That was definitely a pretty uh, pretty big, uh, scary thing. Alongside that, I had to put in Astralis' run. I do not think anyone predicted that major final to be that big of a blowout. I definitely did not see that, especially Navi taking down big the way they did. I would have thought they would have manip manipulated the map pool in some, in some form or fashion, and I definitely don't understand why teams still let Astralis play nuke. And also, this leads into my next biggest surprise of the major so far, Astralis continues their undefeated run so far on Nuke. They are now 19-0 this year with this actual current squad. Alongside that, though, along, uh, across those maps, guys, only one team has actually gone to double digits against them on Nuke. That was actually Team Liquid. And on average, across those 19 maps on Nuke, they are 19-0, and, and, and their enemy average is actually only 8 Eight rounds is what they average against them. So any teams out there who play Nuke, it goes to show you how probably powerful other maps are for Astralis and why they would let that slide through. It's, it still baffles me because Astralis, throughout this entire major, looked absolutely brutal on it, and they continue their undefeated streak on Nuke, guys, 19-0. And then very lastly, my biggest surprise was actually Complexity. They made playoffs, guys. They made Legendary Stage. They'll be at our next major in the Legendary Stage, and that to, in itself is immaculate. That is crazy to see, guys. They go 3-0, of course, to the Legendary Stage. Of course, you know, when it came up against MIBR, not too close of a matchup. Uh, a 2-0 sweep there, I do believe, if I remember correctly. And again, when you match up I for I, that North American talent, uh, definitely MIBR was a favorite team by a landslide. I do think the complexity lineup, of course, what we heard so far throughout the major, Death having an offer from Cloud9, he denied that offer. I think room to grow for this team. How far can they grow with this current roster? That's the huge question going forward. But those are my biggest surprises so far, guys. The major in itself, I think throughout group stages was amazing. Group stages were really fun. Although it's not the perfect format out for the CSGO majors and the playoffs were a bit anticlimactic. I think nonetheless it was still an amazing CSGO major because we got face it leagues. That's freaking sick.